This is an M-rated game, so viewer discretion is advised. This is the Wii Viewer! And the Little Wii Viewer! And we're gonna review... The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. That's a pretty weird, specific name. The Plus is from the DLC for the DLC, which is Afterbirth, which is the DLC for Rebirth. So, this game was just originally The Binding of Isaac, right? This is the sequel to The Binding of Isaac. So this is the second one? Yeah. It's a remake. Was the first one really bad? It's not that the first one was bad, it's that its engine that it used did not really allow for a lot of development in what they wanted to do. They had to basically remake the game. So this is an M-rated game, but it's just for the blood. No, it's more just disturbing. How far did you get in the game? Two dungeons! You have not seen the disturbing yet. I'm sorry, I am terrible at this game! If you die, you start right back at the beginning, so what am I supposed to do? Get good. So we should probably talk about the story. It was really messed up. I mean, it's inspired off of the Bible. There's a lot of religious references all over the place. I really didn't make the connection. The whole time I'm like, lady, you got someone living in your attic. You know what, it's Gary Busey. Gary Busey's hiding in your attic. I have no idea what you're trying to reference. By the way, there's like six people out there that are gonna get that reference. It was a movie, okay? So basically their voice comes from the attic saying, kill your kid. Then the kid retreats into a room, finds a hidden staircase to the basement in there. It's a trap door. In their bedroom? There's a lot of symbolism in this. The gameplay is a twin stick shooter that's also a dungeon crawler. Think Zelda, but if you had a gun, but was also tears. And if it was randomized. Yeah, it was completely randomized. It was a roguelike. So every time he died, it wouldn't be going up against the same enemies. It'd be a completely different world. The only thing that's really saved between deaths is your achievements, and achievements unlock things. So even death will get you advancements. Yeah, good or bad, but you know they exist. So you can make deals with the devil to get more power. Well, every floor has like an item room and a shop and then the normal layout. Usually you want to head to the item room first and then go straight for the boss and then beat that down and go make a deal with the devil and then do that and then move on to the next floor and then rinse and repeat for six floors until you reach the end. Or more likely to me, die on the second level. I tried like multiple, the... multiple times. I'm like, uh, I got to the second part of the basement. I'm like, yes, I may only have two hearts left, but I got this and then I die. More like the second room. Watching you play, it was an atrocity. I recorded it, so you'll see some of my footage, but most of the footage is gonna be you. You can tell the difference if he's made it past the basement. So you got pretty deep in this game. Not really. I made it past like 50%. 50% sounds pretty good. Well, you see, how the game works is that your first run is only able to get through six floors out of the 10, and then your next nine runs can only go through eight of the floors. And then after that, your next five runs after that can only go through another uh, up to like nine floors. And then after that, you finally reach where you do the entire run to completion. And that's when you can beat the thing. So you can get upgraded weapons to make it a little bit easier on yourself. More hearts. This game is extremely hard. It gets hard, like, after your first run. But the first run's easy. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Become better. I tried that. Didn't work. Clearly. There are challenges which uh, bend the rules a little bit, like speed up time times two. So everything, including the music, is sped up. And uh, that's pretty neat. There's also uh, daily runs, which are you have one shot at doing a run. And it gives you all the characters and items, and you just have to go for it. And sometimes they're crazy, and sometimes they're not. Is it randomized, or is it like everybody gets the same run? Yeah, uh, the daily run, everyone gets the same thing. It's a leaderboard kind of thing. And finally, there's greed mode, which is more of like a wave system. Instead of going from room to room, you basically just fight wave to wave. It's very snowball heavy, so if you can get past the first floor, you typically can get to the end of the run. Your character starts to look really weird at a certain point. The more upgrades you get to yourself, it actually weirds out your body. Every item that you pick up basically appears on your body in some way. So if you get like a stem pack, you're gonna be looking weird. Or if you get like a, a third eye, you're gonna grow an eye out of your head. Or if you get toothpicks, you have toothpicks in your eyes. Why would you want toothpicks? Because it makes you do more damage, because your tears are bloody. There's a lot of items in this game. It's a little reviewer. The Binding of Isaac, Afterbirth Plus. Would you buy Red Sail or Skip? Buy. It's a good game. And it comes with all the DLCs. I would say rent or sale. If you can rent it, great, because that way you can check it out. But 40 bucks is what they're asking for this game. I'd say let it go down another 10 bucks. Honestly, I wish you could buy the game in parts, since that's how DLC works. But they don't really have that, so you do have to go for the $40 plunge. Well, I mean, they could have been like how they did Shovel Knight in the Switch, where you can buy the DLC or you can buy just the I agree. base game. They probably should have done that, but I don't mind the way they did it. <laughs>